the pagan Meccans. So he was not a free man of the city. It was not a permissible, a permissible thing for him to be in that location, doing what it is he was uh, being divinely ordered to do. So it was a prediction for the future of what Allah was going to bring him into. Allah is saying that he is going to make him and his way the effort that he was establishing based on revelation from Allah, Allah was going to make that the permissible way in Mecca, in time. But it was also saying that you are halal in this city. Also for the pagan Meccans. You have to be careful, my prophet, because the pagan Meccans see you as halal for them to do something with him that they had agreed not to do in all of the time prior to him. You know, they had a, 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 an unwritten law in the Arab society against killing their own people, their own tribes members. Do you know that when they sought to kill the prophet, you know the story, when they substituted Ali in the bed for them, that was the first instance in that history where they had ever attempted to kill one of their own people? It was forbidden up until that time. So he had become permissible now for them to kill, for them to slaughter. Speaking of mostly African Americans, right? Mm -hmm. Understand what I'm saying? Allah sends his prophets and messengers as reminders of the agreement. What agreement? The agreement that all of our souls made in the beginning. When Allah asked all of the souls that would ever come into being. Am I not your Rabb? And it says that all of the souls said. Bala. Indeed. And Allah says that he asked us that so that in the end we would not be able to say we didn't know. We didn't know you were the Lord. We didn't know you were the guardian evolver, the keeper, the sustainer. No, he put that in there. But he also put a proclivity in us to forget. And the prophets and messengers are sent as reminders of that original agreement. And that agreement is clocked into the human soul. And clocked into the genetics. So why are we saying all of this? To let us know that there are some deep-rooted issues that are contained within the genetic framework of African-American life and circumstances. Deep-seated issues and concerns. And Allah has sent us leader after leader after leader in order to address the quagmire of issues. In order to address those things that have held us back without us even knowing consciously what the uh, reasons were for the holdback. And Allah has culminated in Imam W.D. Muhammad the leadership that would be the most effective in solving the problem. And I'm talking about the problems for us as a people. Now we're going to get into some concepts, and I hope you have your pens and papers handy. Those of you who know me, you know what I'm about to do. We're going to have a little bit of a marathon in terms of the information. Because I want you to get this. Even if you don't understand all of it today, it is something that will be recorded. It is something that you can take with you. And inshallah, you will use it at home with your families as a learning tool. Community life depends on knowledge, information, education. And education is something that even most educators have not understood in terms of its true meaning, its true origin. Education actually comes from an English word. Yes, sir. Education comes from an English word called educe. E-D-U-C-E. And I like for people who are in the fields of education to understand its etymology. It will help us tremendously. 
educe does not mean to put into. I worked in high school teaching for 13 years in New York City, and I remember the teachers coming in and saying uh, that their job was to open up these empty heads and pour their PhDs and their master's degrees full of information into these young brains. And they took pride in that idea. But education does not, again, involve us taking empty-headed human beings at a very early age and putting the necessary information into that person's head. That is not what education is. Educe is a word that actually means to bring or to lead out, not to put in. Now look at the difference in the dignity that this second definition gives. If I see myself as a teacher or as an educator or as an instructor whose job is to bring out something that is already there, something that is lying dormant within the potential of that young human being, then I am saying several things. First of all, I'm saying that I am not the one responsible for what's already in there. That God, Allah we say, right, is responsible for whatever that is that's in there that I'm about to help bring out. That's the first idea. So the first idea humbles the teacher. Because the teacher says, well, I'm coming in here, I just, I hope I, I'm going to do the best I can with respect for what God has already put in that child's brain. We call it intelligence. Listen to these words. English is a powerful language. The more I study it, the more I'm amazed. We call it intelligence. Intelligence is not something that is given to you by human beings. Intelligence is that which Allah has already clocked into you through your DNA. How do we know? Look at the word. Intelligence. We don't have a board, so just use your mental blackboard. I-N-T-E-L-L-I-G-E-N-C-E. -E -E, correct? All right. Break it down. Never be afraid of big words. All they are are combinations of little words. Just like in Arabic. Morphology. That's all it is. English follows the same rules. Intelligence means internal. I-N. T-E-L-L-I. Tele. Communication. Telegraph. Telephone. Telegram. Communication. Internal communication from where? The gents. The genes. So intelligence means that your genes are already communicating knowledge. And in fact, the biologists say that your DNA carries enough information to fill libraries. In fact, they say Congress of, what is that? The Congress of, Library of Congress. To fill thousands of libraries of Congress. The information that's contained in one person's DNA. They say if you were to unravel the chromosomes, it would stretch from here to the moon. One person. And all of that is information. We don't have to teach the baby where to find milk when the baby's born. There's no teacher there saying, okay, up, go up the belly, make a left, make a right. We don't have to do that. The child has clocked into his or her and his and her genetics the information that will allow them to find that milk without external instruction. We don't have to teach that baby not to, uh, 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 or, uh, uh, to, to remain quiet when there is loud noise in the environment. If there's a loud noise, the child is going to become shocked, the child is going to cry. If the child is under fear, even if the child is unsanitary, hmm? problem in the diaper area. That child is going to cry because being filthy is not a part of the child's fitter. Being in loud environments is not a part of the child's fitter. Being in a situation of discomfort is not a part of the child's original fitter. So how come when we become young people, how come when we become teenagers, how come when we become young adults we learn to love filth? We love to be in loud environments. Because some...